More importantly, I need to devise some sort of plan of getting my bumming on one of these buggies because they look like a lot of fun. And chief controller of fun is Steve Malpass. For something like the Joyrider, which is on our main cars, we use donor parts off like the Fiat Cinquento because it's a cracking car, it's cheap to get hold of, like using steering rack, lower arms, drive shafts and stuff like that. So this is what happens when you get all the parts and what it actually finishes up into. We've got a Saxo engine at the moment which is going in there, 1.6, should be good for about 150 mile an hour. 150. 150, possibly pushing 160 if we tune it. And is this what I think it is? Is this um, an old Morgan? It certainly is an old Morgan. We've got it in wow. at the moment. And the lads are just working on it at the moment. And this one's going to be about another month before this one's completed. And then there's got to be a bodywork go on it and then job done. Right, shall we have a look at these parts? Yes, you've shown Come me yours. Then. Let me show you what I've got for you now. Oh, wow. Nice stuff. Yeah, steering rack looking pretty good. Good gaiters on it and stuff. Yeah, I think we can use that. Why don't you show me what these things can do and we'll come back to the um, financial aspects of the purchase. Sounds like a good plan to me. Oh, okay. Let's do that. <laughs> This may not seem the perfect scenario for deal making, but even when he's flying uphill and down Dale, what are you doing? Oh my God! Sheldon has a one-track mind. You know you're not going to get the bits for seventy-five quid. It's got to be one fifty, Steve. I mean, I've started off the whoa. Well, I was thinking more around a hundred. Hundred sounds pretty good to me. You still got. The steering rack, you've got the car! Oh! Whoa! Oh my god! <laughs> Is that a wheel? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was alright. Just just wheels at it there. See? You're gonna need parts from me. Yeah. Not just these ones, you're gonna need lots of parts from me. It's yeah. gotta be 150 Steve. You know it makes sense. We've had an absolute buzz today, and you know what? It's worth 150 for the buzz. You know it. Top man. Thank you, you really much, are. <laughs> you know you are a top man. And that could be a game-changing transaction. <laughs> Sheldon and George have raced into profit. You're not well, do you know that? It's the final day of dismantling, and a Suzuki Samurai just keeps on giving to Ben and Frankie. Even the lawnmower they found buried in the back has attracted a punter. 14-year-old gardening entrepreneur, Eaton. I want to start up a, a lawn mowing business. Uh, hopefully I can make quite a bit of money out of this. I'll drive a hard bargain if I need to. Eden, isn't it? Yeah. That's quite appropriate considering you're going into the gardening business, isn't it, really? I like you. And you're again concerned because you are now officially an entrepreneur and you're going to take this away, ain't you, for 35 stops? No. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do with you, Eden. I'm in a good mood. And I'm going to let you have that for a score for £20. I can do that. You got it on you? Yep, yeah, the... That's a knackered lawnmower sold to a schoolboy for 20 quid. Rule one in business, never trust your elders. I don't know what it's coming to. I mean, I've been touched up by two 14-year-olds. I mean, what's the matter with the schools these days? Frankie doesn't have long to dwell on the state of the UK education system. Even the potentially seized and carburetor-free engine has attracted interest. Hello, mate. Uh, I received your email about the engine and box. That's it, isn't it? It's why it's ninepence. I mean, to you, I mean, I'll have a deal with you. I mean, you know, I ain't going to pull the wool over your eyes. Kit cars. Do you know what? You took the words right out of my mouth. That's exactly what I was thinking. You're down on the south coast, are you? Funny, I do love a stick of rock. I'll tell you what, I might come down here. Have a day out? Yeah, have a bit of fish, sit down by the seaside, yeah. I'm on my way down to Little Anson. See a geezer called Tim. He fancies the, uh, the engine out of the Suzuki Samurai. He does something to do with, like, kit cars or something. I mean, so, uh, Little Anson, here I come. Well, kit car tells half the story. But in Tim Dutton, Frankie has inadvertently found the one man in the UK for whom a submerged engine is an everyday occurrence. We've been making amphibious cars now since uh, 1995. All the cars that we sell throughout the world, apart from America and Canada, are based on the Suzuki Jimny. 
but they never imported the chimney into America or Canada. So when we sell them there, we have to resort back to the earlier Suzuki, which is a Samurai, which is why I desperately need a Samurai engine. Hello, Frankie. Hello, Tim. Uh, what's the story with this engine? And I brought it all the way up from London. Jump in and I'll show you what we do. What, in this? In this. Like one of these kit car things, Sim isn't it? Yeah, similar sort of thing. But this one's slightly different. Now, Frankie doesn't have the benefit of hearing this revealing sea shanty. And having only ascertained that he's knocking out an engine to a kit car builder, his day is about to take an unexpected turn. Sort of, it's a bit of me, this. Yeah, yeah we'll, just, we'll just turn right here. What are you doing, Tim? No, Tim. Tim, that's the water, Danny. No, Tim, 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 Tim. Tim, no, Tim. No, Tim. No, Tim. You can't do it, Tim. Tim. Oh, Tim. Get me out of here, Tim, a bit sharp, because you're not a well boy. So he took me out for a little day trip on a boat, and I'm screaming like a nut. Ah, all right. It's all, it's all madam. It don't mean anything. It don't mean anything. So you got to get me out of here, Tim. It's ain't funny. But it was certainly a bit frightened to start with. But then you do, because if you're sitting in something that looks like a car, you don't expect it to drive into the water. We're in a car, Tim. We're in a car. Car. You don't have a car on a boat. You don't. It's a fact. No, no, they go together really well, a car on a boat. No, they don't. Yeah. No, they don't, Tim, and I don't like water anyway. I wasn't actually scared, in, in the sense of the word, scared. And I can see, I can see you're already double excited. One thing that'll never frighten Frankie is the negotiation of a price. Let's get down to some number crunching. OK. I really do fancy that you should part up with no less than that sort of 120 nicker. How long do I get a guarantee on it for? Well, you don't, you don't get guarantees, strictly. It's got bits missing. You know, important bits like the carburetor. But the car, but the carburetor is neither here or there. What's neither here or there? Well, it's not here, that's for sure. No, it's not here. It's not here, no. I think I'll offer you that. 80 quid, 80 quid. No, look, Tim, look, I'll tell you what I'm going to say to you, Tim. I'm going to say to you, 100 nicker. Tim. Oh, very well. It's a deal. A ton for a potentially seized Samurai engine is the icing on the cake of a dream dismantle. And uh, the receipt, please? The receipt? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tim. I'll see you later, Tim. Back at base, it's time for George to assess whether the Seicento engine has the same earning capacity as their opponent's power plant. So we've got the engine out and it's, it's the moment of truth. We're going to have to get right in there, get the head off and, and inspect it. First job you've got to do is take the rocker cover off and then pull the head up. Next job is to take the cam belt off and then take the ten head bolts out and we'll remove it. Then we literally lift the head off and have a look. So here it is, the head gasket, and its job is to act as a seal between the head and the block and it allows the coolant to pass around the cylinders but not to enter the cylinders. And what you've got here is a metal ring, which is called the fire ring. It allows the gases, the hot gases, to stay in the cylinder and pass out of the head. But as you can see, straight away I can see number one has been corroded away and that is where the coolant is obviously leaking it into the cylinder. That's why our engine would have lost all its water and not run. Unfortunately, this isn't great news for Sheldon and I because, let alone replacing the head gasket, we've got to get the head sent away, get that skimmed, you've got your cam belt, and we're only going to make a couple hundred pounds of this engine. I'm afraid on this occasion it's just not worth our while. There's no money in this engine for us. You know, in this game you're always going to get something back on an engine. Not, in, not on this one, I ain't. That engine's totally and utterly useless, and bearing in mind the time factor I've got and what it's going to cost to put it all back together, I've, I need a miracle. I really do need a miracle. The three days allotted for our teams to dismantle their cheap and cheerful scrappers is drawing to a close. Spiderwebs. Ben and Frankie have enjoyed an almost perfect dismantle and have little left to sell on their Suzuki Samurai. George and Sheldon have managed to edge into profit with their Fiat Seicento. But after realising that the engine is rendered worthless by a blown head gasket, they need a big sale to retain any hope of victory. 
with the clock ticking, in various time zones, Sheldon is pulling out all the stops to shift the troublesome body kit. Could salvation have arrived in the form of Bradford-based Fiat specialist, Myatt? We started in 2008, specialising in parts for Fiat Seicentos and Cinquecentos. I actually borrowed 350 quid off my dad to start the business up and we've been growing since. I've come down today to get some uh, body parts. Might even be interested in some lights. Well, Maya, here's all the bits and pieces that we discussed. Yeah, the front bumper's in a bit more of a state than I thought it would be. Right. It's obviously been in a front end accident because the headlights are from a later model. There's no cracks on the bumper, might have a few scuffs. Chances are, whatever car you're going to put it on, you're going to paint it anyway. I'm selling it as a job lot with the fog lights in there, and I think it's quite a reasonable price. How much do you want for it again? I was going to say 130 for the bumpers and call it £40 for the lights. I was going to say about 100 quid less than that, Sheldon. I was going to say 70. I'm a Yorkshireman. <laughs> yeah, and I'm from Stanmore. <laughs> yeah, we roll for no one. 100 quid? No. Nah. Call it 130. 115 and you got some. 120 and shake my hand on one. Go on, 120. Yeah? Go on, Sheldon. Oh, you're a hard man. <laughs> Squeezing any money out of a Yorkshireman is an achievement. 120 quid right at the death is a triumph. Ibargum. That deal proves to be the final chapter in the cheap and cheerful story for George and Sheldon. As it's time to weigh in what's left of their Sicento for scrap. With scrap metal going at 125 pounds a tonne, a weight of 532 kilos adds a very useful 67 pounds to profit. A last-minute phone sale of the Samurai body shell for 75 quid means that Frankie and Ben have little to weigh in. Nonetheless, the 187 kilos remaining equates to another 24 notes in their coffers. It's been a close fought challenge, but who'll be crowned the bargain basement kings? Saint tells me that's uh, bigger than what it started off to be. Well, actually, lads, I think that yours Looks a lot better like that. That's funny, that is, George. That's funny. That's really funny. Anyway, what's the money saying? We have parted up with 120 knicker for that little gold bind there. Little bit of gold. Total sales, 520 sobs. Giving us a lovely little profit of 400 knicker. There. Buying cheap was the key to Frankie and Ben's success. The sale of the wheels alone put them in profit, allowing smaller sales to bump up takings. Phone sales of items that included roll bar and axles with an icing on the cake. £400 represents a profit of 333%. An amazing return. But is it a winning number? We paid £250 for our little Sacento. Total sales, £602 which gives us a total profit of 352 pounds. Sheldon and George paid the maximum 250 pounds for their Fiat, but stayed in contention throughout the challenge. The majority of their profits were provided by the sale of wheels, front suspension and body kit, whilst internet sales of the exhaust and spoiler kept margins looking healthy. Ultimately, a worthless engine cost them dearly, as they were beaten by just 48 quid. Well, I do have to say, credit where credit's due, I did pretty well there. Life is a shipwreck. A bit like that motor, really. I mean, how can we lose to a car that's been found in the bottom of a lake? I feel a bit guilty, because we lost, and I should be gutted, but I'm not. After the crack that I had on that little buggy, I've made one decision. I'm getting one. Since the making of this programme, all the parts stripped and sold have gone on to help a host of other vehicles live again. The Ginellos are as pleased as punch with the Seicento wheels. Tim Dutton is busy transplanting the Samurai engine into an amphibious car. It's not that engine, which is probably why he's still smiling. Whilst young Eden hasn't had much joy with Frankie's lawnmower. You'll learn, kid. You'll learn.